So we will go, we will praise the kingdom of God is here. Hello, welcome to Church on the Go and Ambassadors for Christ. I'm Pastor Steve Coates and this is Pastor Curtis Alexander. And today we're continuing on our series talking about ministry to Christian singles. And uh, today I have a number of questions I'm going to be asking Curtis to share because he heads up the ministry here at Church on the Go. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're uh, wanting to discuss a number of things that he's been working through with a number of the singles that he relates to, mm -hmm. both here in the church and also online. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, first of all, today we want to um, just kind of... Um, uh, pull some thoughts together from the previous videos uh, concerning singleness as a gift, uh, particularly for serving God and his people in ministry with minimal distractions. So how can Christian singles begin to make use of this gift today? That's a good question. See, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We will rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, um, uh, we can begin to activate our gift today as we've previously discussed 1 Corinthians 7 7 Paul said I wish all men were like myself yeah, right. he was single yeah. he loved it because he could just pour out himself to other people right, right. well how can we activate ourselves today right. as singles yeah. um, we by, we do it by shifting our thinking up yes upwards Going we got to start thinking up <laughs> you know you've probably seen in our previous video we had a card yes. said saying going up right well, we need to go up in our thinking. Amen. We need to shift our thinking upwards to the thinking of Jesus Christ Amen. and to the thinking of Paul the Apostle who mimicked Christ. Right. Right. Uh, both of them lived on earth as singles. Yes. All right. And they operate in singleness as a gift that right. is to be given in ministry. They did not focus on themselves. Right. right. Um, they focused on God first and then, then on those who they served. Right. Once we shift our thinking, we can also shift our actions. Right. Okay, you can't do something if you're not really thinking that way. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta steer. You know, the, the the rudder has to be going in a different direction before the boat goes that right, direction. Right. Right. right? So uh, it, we shift our thinking. We shift our actions. What do you mean that singleness is a gift? Yeah. It's, uh, it feels like a curse. Yeah. Yeah. But God wants to do something good and new out of your right. circumstance, right. and so if this takes revelation. It takes a genuine hunger for God's true will in your life. Yeah. And as a side note, uh, marriage is also a gift that's right. focused on giving. Right. All right. One must not be self-focused in that gift either. Right. So both gifts are great seasons and opportunities for helping us to conquer selfish human nature. Right. Each gift helps us in a different way, but there are no self-centered gifts. Right? That's it. So uh, let's start with that revelation right there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let me ask you, how does the gift of singleness especially help one overcome selfish human nature? Well, uh, anyone who is single or is single again yeah. can relate to what I'm about to say. Yeah. Uh, I have sometimes wondered, what about me? When is it my turn to find a new relationship? You know, uh, right. that goes through the minds of most Christian singles. I mean, some of them are happy and content and just want to live the single life. Right. But I think most of us generally are looking for, forward to a new season someday, right. Right? right? It is a good question, but only the Lord knows the answer to that. That's it. And you have to trust him with that answer. Yes. Yes. However, as a single, one of our greatest assets is the time we have today. Yeah. You know, there is a saying, time is money. <laughs> right, and uh, the thing is, um, when we work, you know, I have a, I have a, a job that I work at a store. Uh, mm -hmm. I get paid by the hour. Right, time is money. Right, right. I get paid for the hours of service rendered. Right. Uh, so uh, the fact is that we have time, and it's valuable. Right. All right. So uh, I speak from experience when I say that we must be careful not to waste time right we must when we over overemphasize. Now I understand we have struggles and we have challenges but when we overemphasize them we are becoming too self-focused right. right paul talked about his own troubles and his own trials but he didn't emphasize them he right. he continued to pour out to other people right. jesus poured out on other people even on the cross right. jesus was concerned about the cross the, uh, right. the the thief that finally said remember me when you come to your yes. kingdom well this is the whole thing even when it comes to evangelism and asking people you know, 
yeah. whether they're registered in heaven. Yes. Okay. Are they going up? The thief, the two thieves, let's start with two criminals. Let's start with those two guys. I mean, the one guy uh, ridiculed Jesus. Jesus didn't uh, say anything to him positively. But the other, the second fellow said, hey, he, he's, he's uh, not like us. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's, he's done nothing he's wrong. He's concerned about us. You know, he's yeah. concerned. You know, Lord, remember me. Yeah. When you know, so uh, Jesus said, "Today you'll be with me in paradise." He said that while in excruciating pain, yes. on the verge of death. Right. He had lost so much blood. Right. I mean, this is the ministry of Jesus. Yeah. He ministered to people while he was dying. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, I can only hope to attain to that level of dedication. And he ministered to the one that was hungry and asking. Yeah, absolutely. But he had the time to do it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And, and he had a mission, and yeah. he accomplished that mission. Yeah. So um, we must not allow that uh, weight to interfere yeah. with the yeah. task at hand. Yeah. Uh, singleness in our culture is often equated with waiting, Yeah. Um, which is not a bad thing, but... You know, it, it gets to be overemphasized. Yeah. We're waiting to be completed. We're waiting to be fulfilled. Yeah. We're usually taught to wait for a spouse to come. You know, nothing wrong with that. But again, there's more to it. You know, the kind of waiting we should be doing is nothing like standing in a line. Yeah. Or waiting for an elevator to arrive. Yeah. You know, like, where's when is that yeah. thing going to show up? Yeah. yeah. Where's that taxi I called? Yeah. Right? No, not that kind of waiting. We work and we serve others while we wait. Right. Right. Absolutely. I mean, uh, and, and now this doesn't apply to people who know in their heart of hearts that they are called to a lifetime of singleness. Right. OK. They know that they are called and they they they're they're set. But right. for most of us, it's a season. But don't waste the season. Right. Right. So once I shifted my eyes to Jesus and I and I asked him what he wants to do today, I began to see new purpose and new vision. I began to see my time differently. Singles, as a general rule tend to have more time for ministry than those who are married. How do we use that time? How do we how do we use our time to meet with God? Do we make time to love and help others in church? Right, right. Uh, do we allow for time to share the gospel with people out in the world? Right. Ask them, are you going up? Right. Are you registered? Right. Um, once we uh, gain revelation from the Holy Spirit that our time is not really our own, but it is really His, we can begin to activate the gift. We can start today. Jesus activated His gift by giving His time to the Father in heaven and also to others. You were going to yeah, say. I was just going to say that you know a lot of people think that they can worship on their own, yeah. rather than together in the fellowship yeah. of the believers, yeah. uh, in in a local church setting. But the truth of the matter is that you can't have fellowship by yourself. You can fellowship with the Lord, but you can't have fellowship with others. Right. And it's uh, the, the relationship in the body of Christ is vertical to the head, but it's horizontal to the members. That's right. And if you're not operating horizontally to the members, then you're not rightly dividing the body of Christ. That's right. You're not. You're not you, rightly discerning the body of. That's Christ. right. You're not. You should be connected to the vine. Right. There's and yeah. and Paul actually says in 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 First Corinthians eleven because we haven't properly discerned the body of Christ. That is on the horizontal level. That's why many of you are sick and weak, and some of you have even died. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So as a result, we need to understand the head is Jesus. And the body is, is horizontal. And we need to be in fellowship with the other members of the body. That's right. And that's why we need to be together. Absolutely. And I can speak from personal experience. In my college days, I had uh, not wasn't going to church. I, you know, I loved yeah. the Lord, but I wasn't yeah. going to church. Right. I came back from college knowing that Christians aren't meant to be alone. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I got time to become a part of this living temple that is fitly right. joined together. Right. You know, Ephesians 2 talks about that. Yeah. Anyways, so in Matthew 20, 29 to 34, we talk about Jesus. And it, it says that Jesus uh, did, did the following. As they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the way, uh, by the wayside. And when they heard that Jesus had passed by, cried, saying, O Lord, the son of David, have mercy on us. And the multitude rebuked them it's because they should hold their peace. You know, Jesus is on a you know on a on a journey here. Yeah. He's got a schedule to keep. Don't you yeah. understand that? Yeah. He doesn't have time for you. Right. Don't you understand that? Be quiet. Yeah. Well, 
they said all the more. Uh, they said all the more, but they cried the more, saying, O oh Lord, the son of David, have mercy on us. Right. They were so desperate and they were so hungry right. that they were willing to break social rules. Right. right. right? Uh, they didn't care what popular opinion was. Right. And so it said, and said, they said to him, uh, oh, sorry, and then verse 32, then Jesus stood still. Think about that. He stopped and called them and said, what will ye that I should do to you? Jesus has time right. for you. Right. He has time for us. Right. And especially as singles, we should have time, yeah. make time. Yeah. And what did they say in verse 33? And Jesus said to him, Lord, that our... And sorry, they said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. In verse 34, and Jesus moved with compassion, touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. You know, that's a miracle. And uh, I think we need more miracles in the church today. Paul, Paul followed Jesus' example quite literally. He said, we do not, uh, in 1 Corinthians 9, and chapter 9 is very good it's kind of meaty it talks about not making full use of our rights in the ministry and he says in verse five do we not have the right to take along a believing wife as do the other apostles and the brothers of the lord and of cephas Uh, verse 15a i'm just skipping along here says uh but i have made no use of any of these rights nor am i writing these things to secure any such provision verse 19 why Verse 19 says, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I may win more of them. So he had a mission. He had a, a very specific focus in yeah. ministry. Uh, so if we're in this season of singleness, we must learn to think like Jesus and give our time to God and to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm-hmm. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you activate this gift right. by focusing on what he wants you to do with your time right now, today. Right. Okay, Curtis, because of time, we're going to wrap this up. But uh, are there any other ways that singles can activate their their gift of singleness? Yes. Uh, We can activate the gift by learning to discern and differentiate between the gift of singleness and the circumstance leading to the singleness. Mm -hmm. I've met with challenges on this, that I don't really have the gift of singleness because of certain circumstances that happened, Mm -hmm. right? Um we should ask God to sanctify our singleness right. and to use it for his purpose. Right. Uh, some people do reject singleness as a gift because of how it came to be in their life. Yes, circumstance can sometimes be negative. Right. Uh, I know this all too well. Often we are alone because of bad things that occur. There's death. There's unfaithfulness that leads to divorce. There's abandonment that leads to yeah. divorce. Uh, but there's a verse that reminds us that God can make good come out of any situation that a believer may be going through. In Romans 8 and 28, in the King James Version, it says, But we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, for to them that are the called according to his purpose. The Geneva Version says that all things work together for the best. God knows the best course of action in your circumstance. Ask God to sanctify your singleness and ask God to use your time today. Amen. And I, that's basically it. Right. Great. Well, these are good thoughts to to share with those who are going through the, the pain of, uh, of loneliness, the pain of yes. uh, perhaps uh, having lost a loved one, whether it's through death or through separation or, or have, have never really found, uh, you know, uh, someone that they can share their life with. Right. But Everybody is valuable in Absolutely. the sight of God. Absolutely. Everybody in the church is valuable in the sight Amen. of God. And that is one of the reasons why we need to be together. You know, uh, using mass media uh, in various forms, whether it's television or the social networking or whatever, does not replace personal fellowship one with another. Absolutely. And we need to be able to actually look each other in the eye. Yep. We need to be able to to lay our hand on each other and pray right. for each other yep. in the name of the Lord Amen. and encourage one another, help one another. Mm-hmm. So I encourage you to find a Christian fellowship mm-hmm. and become an active, vital uh, person involved with that church, Absolutely. whether they have whether they have official membership or adherence, but be part of that body. Yeah, don't isolate yourself in the name of Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. 
So God bless you. Amen. And if you're in the new market area, you're always welcome here at Church on the Go. Amen. God bless. Have a great day. God bless. So we